Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day and uh, that you have uh, some weekend plans. Maybe you're planning to do something a little different for the weekends. Uh, opportunity to um, check out our live stream or our recorded services and uh, hope you take advantage of those as, uh, as we can't be together right now. Uh, due to the stay-at-home orders and, and all that's happening in our world uh, with COVID-19. You know, as um, today we are going to take a look at James uh, chapter 3 uh, and Ezekiel chapter 4 and 5. And so I would invite you to grab your Bibles and to uh, turn with me there. We're going to start in James chapter 3. Now, speaking of stay-at-home orders, uh, I don't know about you, but I can feel like uh, it's it's doing a number on uh, a, a bunch of different things, right? Maybe you find that as you continue with uh, staying at home and being around the same people and um, that you're... Uh, constantly interacting with the same people and maybe not going out and doing the normal things you do. Uh, maybe you're finding out uh, tempers are a little short. Uh, I've heard of a couple of people who are still going to work and man, their schedules are still overloaded, even with the stay at home order. And then, then we open to Facebook, right? Social media. And while it's a great way, it's a great tool to stay in contact with people, uh, Facebook rants, oh boy, uh, they could go on and on and on. People are always critical, no matter what side or position you take. People always have something to say about anything and everything. And sometimes it makes you wonder, I, I thought, I thought we were better than this as people. What all this time together reveals, especially under the pressure of such unusual and, and oftentimes scary and frightening circumstances, is the underlying cracks in our character. And so what are we to do? What, what can we do? Uh, we can't leave home. We can't go hang out with friends and, and other family members. We can't go see uh, our aunts or our cousins or or just friends. We can't, uh, you know, for a lot of us, we can't go to work. We can't go to our bowling club or whatever it is we're involved in. Our contact has been limited. Uh, the pressure's not letting up. What are we to do? How do we handle this? You know, James gives us an answer. First and foremost, we have to acknowledge the truth. Uh, it's the simple fact, we're not perfect. Uh, I know that's a shock to some, uh, but you and I, none of us, are perfect. Only Jesus is. Only Jesus is perfect. And so what are we to do? First, we're to ask him for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness for our short tempers. Ask for forgiveness for continuing to overload our schedules. Ask for forgiveness for the times that we speak when maybe we don't know all the facts and when we make judgments on based upon what we see and what we don't know. Ask for forgiveness. Okay, now what? Well, James tells us. Take a look at James chapter 3, uh, verses 17 and 18. Here's what he says. But the wisdom from God is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. You know, focus on the words and the way, uh, what, what James calls the wisdom from above. And what does it lead to? It leads to all kinds of fruit of faith that we can see in our lives. It leads to, you know, peaceable, uh, 
pureness. It leads to being peaceable and gentle, being open to reason. Instead of making judgment calls based on what we see in the world, it, it opens us up to have a, a good, fruitful discussion, uh, full of mercy, impartial sincerity. Uh, that's what he calls us to do, to uh, to hear the word in the way, uh, to seek God's wisdom from above. Uh, lean into it. Uh, in fact, I would encourage you uh, just to take a look at that list and pick one that would bless you right now and your household. Uh, find one of those things that you're going to work on over the next week or two weeks. Find ways that you know, maybe it's maybe it's peacefulness and maybe you're going to find a way to just say, OK, time out. I need a break and step away when you feel yourself getting mad or upset. Maybe it's being open to reason. And hey, you know what? I'm going to take a look at uh, not just the typical media stream that I go to, that I look to for my news, but I'm going to read all about whatever it is from multiple different sources. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's being full of mercy, finding ways that, that you and your family can help your neighbor or, uh, someone who's, who's struggling, who's hurting around you. Um, doing an act of mercy, finding a way, uh, maybe it's sewing masks, maybe it's baking some goods for your neighbor, maybe it's making soup or, or a meal for the person down the street who you know, uh, has been laid off or, uh, is struggling right now. Find a way to lean into one of these things. Just one. And, and really pursue it over the next couple of weeks. You know, lean into this kind of thing and Jesus, and invite Jesus to develop that character trait more fully in you during this season. Uh, ask him, pray about it. Uh, pray that God would continue to work in your heart to help you to become more peaceable or gentle or open to reason, uh, that he would help you uh, see the hurt that others are going through so that you can respond with mercy. Uh, maybe it's sincerity. Maybe it's asking God to uh, um, help you not be so cynical or... Um, sarcastic um, about things. You know, I know that can be a problem. Sometimes we mask our our insecurities or our worries with sarcasm. Um, pray about those things. And you might be surprised how much that helps. You know, today in our Old Testament lesson, we turn to Ezekiel chapter 4. And uh, in the years leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem, that takes place in 586 BC, God called Ezekiel to prophesy about what was to come uh, for those exiles who would be carried off, uh, who were already in Babylon. And to vividly illustrate what was to come, Ezekiel was given specific instructions of how to enact, uh, how to reenact the siege with a model of the city that was made out of bricks. Take a look at uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Uh, here's, what, here's what it says. And you, son of man, take a brick and lay it before you, and engrave on it a city, even Jerusalem, and put siege works against it, and build a siege wall against it, and cast up a mound against it, set camps also against it, and plant battering rams against it all around. And you, take an iron... Uh, griddle and place it, uh, place it as an iron wall between you and the city and set your face toward it and let it be in a state of siege and press the siege against it. This is a sign for the house of Israel. This is kind of a cool way, uh, kind of a cute way to show the people, uh, what is, uh, what has happened, right? Uh, but it goes on. You know, Ezekiel is called to lay on his side while preaching to signal the years that would be spent in exile. And first he does it uh, for the house of Israel and then for the house of Judah. Take a look at uh, verses 4 through 8. Uh, 4 through 8. Then lie on your left side and place the punishment of the house of Israel upon it. 
For the number of days that you are on it, you shall bear their punishment. For I assign to you a number of days, 390 days, equal to the number of years of their punishment. So long shall you bear the punishment of the house of Israel. And when you have completed these, you shall lie down a second time, but on your right side, and bear the punishment of the house of Judah. Forty days I assign you, a day for each year. And you shall set your face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and your arm barred, and you shall prophesy against the city. So this is where he's preaching with this model of the city that's set up before him. And behold, I will place cords upon you so that you cannot turn from one side to the other until you have completed the days of your siege. Uh, kind of a weird, uh, kind of a neat, uh, but weird symbolic way of representing, uh, showing people, demonstrating for people the punishment that was to come upon the house of Israel and the house of Judah, uh, for, for not listening to God. And then finally, he's given one last task uh, here in chapter 4 to demonstrate for the people. Uh, take a look at Ezekiel chapter 4, uh, beginning at verse 12. And you shall eat it as a barley cake, baking it in their sight on human dung. And the Lord said, Thus shall the people of Israel eat their bread unclean among the nations where I will drive them. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I have never defiled myself. From my youth up till now, I have never eaten what died of itself or was torn by beast, nor has tainted meat come into my mouth. Then he said to me, See, I assign to you cow's dung instead of human dung, on which you may prepare your bread. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, behold, I will break the supply of bread in Jerusalem. They shall eat bread by weight and with anxiety, and they shall drink water by measure and in dismay. I will do this that they may lack bread and water and look at one another in dismay and rot away because of their punishment. You know, this is really kind of a disgusting sign uh, that Ezekiel is called to do to cook bread on. Uh, first, he's called by God to cook it on human dung, uh, but God allows him to cook it on uh, cow dung uh, and then to eat this bread to show um, to show how the people were going to eat bread uh, defiled. They weren't going to be able to make sacrifice. They weren't going to be able to um, go to the temple. They weren't going to be able to uh, be cleaned, uh, be washed of their sin. They were going to be unclean. And in this unclean state, uh, they were going to eat bread. And the Lord goes on to talk about how... Uh, they're going to eat it in anxiety, and they shall drink water by measure and in dismay. I will do this, that they may lack bread and water and look at one another in dismay and rot away because of their punishment. You know, all of this was intended to warn the people of, of God about what was to come. Uh, the other, the utter destruction of Jerusalem, the city of God at the, the center of the world, a punishment for her persistent and her willful disobedience. They had ch continually chosen to go their own way, to not listen uh, to God, to not listen to the messengers that God had sent uh, to his people. Uh, and now this would be the result of what they were going to experience. You know, when I think of, uh, it talks about bread and water instantly, uh, my mind goes to uh, bread and wine. Uh, these people eat bread and water in dismay. But you and I, we get to receive bread and wine. We get to see, receive the body and blood of Christ in, with, and under bread and wine, not for dismay, not for anxiety, but for peace, for comfort, for the renewal of our faith. What great joy that brings us to know that, that in this meal that we get to receive that God is present, that he comes into our midst in a, a tangible way, something that we can cling to and hold on to, and it strengthens our faith, and it gives us faith. What a wonderful blessing it is that we don't have to face the same things that the people of, of ex the exiles uh, 
in Babylon had to face. But we get to receive a meal for our benefit, not to symbolize destruction. That had already taken place. Jesus died for our sins, his body broken, his blood poured out. But now we get to receive his the bread and wine, his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, for the strengthening of our faith. We can find peace and comfort knowing that that God is with us. And I long for the day that we get to do that again. And I know many of you do too. Uh, that we get to, we you can't wait for the day when we can once again come and assemble and hear God's word and, and receive uh, Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, uh, for peace, for comfort, uh, for all the blessings that it gives to us in our lives. Uh, I look forward to that day. Um, that's what keeps me going through some of these days. Uh, when tempers are short, uh, when, when Facebook rants are long, when everybody's got an opinion on everything, oh, looking forward to that day, uh, keeps me going and I hope it does you too. God's blessings to you. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Monday. God bless.